Hi everyone, welcome to Nats Extra alongside Mark Zuckerman. I am Rob Corlin and let's just start with CJ Abrams because with CJ, it's not so much like you're waiting for the light to go on. The light's on, but you're looking for the right fit. As a leadoff hitter last night, he seemed like the right fit. Got on base a couple of times, stole a base, those couple of defensive plays. What do you think about his performance in that spot? Well, this has been in the works for a while, Rob. Uh, Davey Martinez has talked about, really since the beginning of the year, something he wanted to get to a point that he felt like CJ was ready for. It. His previous 15 games, 375 on base percentage, saw better at bats, better approach. And so they said, let's go for it now. And the plan here is to stick with it. This isn't just going to be a one-time thing. He's back in there today. I think they're going to stick with it. And what I liked, first three plate appearances, got on base twice, but each of those three it was five pitches or more took some good pitches fouled off some two strike pitches good approach with all that stole the base obviously what you worry about with a young kid in that spot is that they start overthinking it and doing too much thinking oh well, I'm a leadoff hitter now I've got to do this this and this they don't want him to do that just do what he was doing in the nine or the eight spot we saw it last night and most impressively it kept him engaged in the field as well from those two plays so one game let's see how this all goes but I don't think this is a day-to-day -day thing I think they want this to stick for the rest of the season for the Nats who have lost 15 of their last 16 at home which is remarkable to even think about maybe the all-star breaks coming at a good time for Lane Thomas and the way he's performed so far this first half, perhaps it's a bad time. Is it sustainable for him to do this into the second half? That's the question we've been asking all along. You know, last year, so inconsistent. One month great, one month not so great. He came into this year saying, I want to be consistent month to month. April was okay, then May he took off. June he continued it, and now he's still doing it in July. So that, to me, is a great sign. Now, we still have to see him. He's not proven enough. you got to see that over a full season. But it feels like the stuff he's doing, maybe not quite to that premier, you know, MVP caliber kind of production that he was providing there for a while, but good, solid, everyday production, I think is attainable for him. Now, we talk about CJ in the leadoff spot. Lane now is in the number two spot. You hope that doesn't screw him up. And I think Davey was worried about that. Things are going so well, you don't want to mess around with that. But as long as he takes the same mindset, don't change anything. Keep doing what you're doing. And maybe he'll actually start driving in some runs if CJ Abrams is on base ahead of him. I don't know much about finances, but I have heard in movies over the years that you buy low and sell high. Lane's stock is really high right now. Could they look to deal him? Will he be here in August? And if they don't, who could be some chips? So I think that's one of the more fascinating questions. Now, listen, this is a guy who was acquired as part of the original teardown and rebuild. They got him for John Lester. Nobody imagined they'd be able to get a player who could maybe be an all-star or even a trade chip himself for two months of John Lester. What he's done, He's still affordable, two more years of control. To me, it would have to be an overwhelming offer for that. He can be a part of this thing moving forward. I know they love their minor league outfielders, the prospects they have. You don't know for sure what you're going to get from any of them, especially in the next year or two. If this team thinks they can contend 2024, 20, 25, I think Lane Thomas can be a part of it. Jamer Candelario, one-year deal, different kind of story. I think you do look for the best offer you can get there and understand that that can do something. And then the bullpen. I think this is the more fascinating one. Kyle Finnegan, Hunter Harvey. We know the stuff has been great. We know at times they've come up in big spots. We also know how fickle the relief pitching can be year to year you just don't ever know now they're under control so again if you think they can be a part of a bullpen that is on a winning team in a year or two you'd love to still have them but do you know that they're going to sustain that year to year and this time of year teams get desperate for relief pitching so that's interesting to me if somebody out there is offering a real good prospect or two for one of those i think mike rizzo takes the call you talked about this team hopefully contending in 24 25 it's down the road so we're watching some of these young kids develop for that time could there be innings limits for some of these young pitchers? Yeah, I think Mackenzie Gore is the main one to look at here. They knew this going into the season, was hurt a lot of last year, hasn't gone through a full big league season yet. So you're going to see some of that. Now, in a weird blessing in disguise kind of way, that rain delay the other day, which only threw 17 pitches, might help. They could have brought him back this weekend, just had him go ahead and pitch on short rest. They decided, let's use this. Let's give him an extended break. I would imagine he's not even going to be coming right out of the gates. The All-Star break, they may push him back to the fourth or fifth spot. That saves some innings on him, and maybe he can now go further into September before they decide that he's had enough. So he's the main one to watch. Jake Irvin, who starts today, is in a similar category. They did it with Josiah Gray last year. They managed his innings. They shut him down towards the end. He's in a better spot now. He's set that baseline, so I think they're more comfortable letting him go. I think there's a lot of excitement because we live in this Twitter world where we see clips, and we see clips of James Wood, right? And he hits the ball like 450 feet when he does hit home runs. Problem is he doesn't always hit. Could he or any of these other young players get a look 
come late August, September. Well, first of all, James Wood's hitting cleanup today in the All-Star Futures game. That tells you not just how he's thought of within the organization, but around the sport if he has that kind of prestige. This is the one, and I know Hassel and Rutledge, I think possibly Hassel hasn't had a great year coming back from the handmade surgery. Rutledge has been a great uh, storyline after tons of injuries, finally healthy and moving up the ladder and now at AAA. So if they do need innings later in the year because other guys are being shut down, he would be a candidate for that. Everybody wants to know about James Wood. He is the best prospect they have. We know they need offensive help. It would be a big boost. He's done really well since getting bumped up to double A. How motivated are they? I think things keep going this way. You get at least a look at him at some point. You want to give everyone a taste of what might come. I don't know if that's August or September, right at the end, but I think you want to just get a sense how close to ready this, is this guy and because I do think he's a big part of this next year. And look, if you want to put butts in the seats, that's a good way to put butts <laughs> in the seats for a couple of games late in this season. Uh, do you have your Harry Potter scarf? No, I've been informed, though, that I am required to come home with one, specifically the Gryffindor one. I don't believe that's what this one is. I, I don't know from Harry Potter. You have two Potter. daughters. Don't you know this? Yeah, no, I don't know from Harry Potter, but this is the scarf. You could at least use it to, like, pat your it's face. It's a great day to wear a scarf. It's a great, it's a great, great scarf weather day. All right, Mark, thanks.